So you just got an X-Tool laser and you're wondering where to start after assembly? This might just be the place. Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Sam Craft. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through a brand new file that I've designed specifically for X-Tool Creative Space. And this is a file that is designed to be the one file you should need for all of your engraving and cutting tests to figure out exactly what settings and parameters your machine works out best so you can kick out those projects and not waste material. On the Samcraft scale of entertainment and education, this one is all the way over there in education land. I'm going to chunk this up into different chapters. There'll be links to those down below. YouTube will kind of show you where you can jump ahead. I'll try and make it where you can jump to what subject you want or skip the ones you don't care about. But otherwise, this is going to be a complete walkthrough of Xtool Creative Space with my cutting engraving test file and show you all of the features, functionality, and uses of it. That being said, let's jump into it. All right guys, I'm here at my desk. I'm launching Xtool Creative Space. This is where everything starts with your laser. My laser is on, it is connected to my computer. That beep signifies we have connection and that is the first thing you want to do. Now here on the screen, you're seeing the black slats or bars on my P2 model. I'm just gonna right click and choose to hide the background. That way things look a little more normal. If you don't have this exact machine, perhaps you got one of the D1 models whether it be the 10 watt, 5 watt, Pro, 20 watt, 40 watt, whatever watt, it's going to work. If your laser uses Xtool Creative Space, it should work for this file. First thing to do is go and open my file or the project. Select it here, click open, and depending upon your speed, your computer speed or whatever, it may take it just a little bit to open. Okay, our file has opened up. First thing you're greeted with is the tab that says begin here. It's basically black text. You may be thinking, ugh. Why, I bought cutting files, I bought engraving test files. Why am I looking at this? Well, this is here to help you. So let me hold down the control key and use the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in on this thing so we can see it a little bit better. Also, go to hold down the space bar and that way drag it over. These are two of the most common shortcuts I use with Xtool Creative Space. And here we have the overview, the place to begin, and basically some information about the file. What you're going to see is this file is several tabs called Canvases and Xtool Creative Space or XCS and each tab is a separate file that you may want to run. On this screen here I also want you to note over here to the right you'll see I have my machine connection it's the Xtool P2. It tells me I have the slats flat version. My material says user defined material you might be tempted to change it, but do not change this. Word on the street is changing the material right here away from user defined can overwrite settings and cause issues with predefined or pre-configured files. So in that case, bullet number two, leave the material alone. Leave it as user defined material. Bullet number three is to be sure and read the notes from Sam section on every canvas or tab. I've really tried to think about the complete process give you all of the tips and tricks, steps and information you may need so that when you load this up, if things don't run smooth as butter, not as easy as you may see in the video, you at least have the text there. And that's my first line of support for you if you buy this file from me to keep you from being frustrated, having to stop, write an email and wait for a reply. So the notes are there. I would recommend reading through them and checking them out. And last but not least, don't overwrite the file. At least my advice is not to overwrite this file. If you do make changes and it's things you want to keep, always go to file and save as and rename it. That way, if something happens, you go down the road, maybe you get a different machine, you upgrade your machine from a 10 to 20 watt, something like that, you can have this original file as it is to start from scratch. Now, that being said, anywhere I sell this file, it's digital. So whether it's my website, sam-craft.com or on my Etsy store, you're going to be able to re-download your order, so that's fine. You always have access to that, unless the internet implodes or you don't have access to the internet. But I always like to have files on hand so that I don't have to go through the process of looking at my order, finding it, downloading it, and doing all that rigmarole over again. The last little bits down here is basically, you know, please don't share it or reproduce this file. Don't rip me off here. Don't take it and sell it on Etsy, please. This file and the purchases I make through them does actually help support me and my family. We are fully self-employed, my wife and I, between our business, between our YouTube channel, and this stuff 
really means a lot to us. With that out of the way, we're going to go down here to the bottom and we're going to click on the first tab, which happens to be the 20-200 engraved test. Here what you're presented with, in pink, notes from Sam. So this is a slow engraving test designed for non-combustible materials or low-powered machines. If this is an object that you can cut out, you will notice that I've added the blue cutout and the little blue dot. That's for you to be able to cut this out of your material and then keep it. As you guys will see throughout this video, I like to keep all of my test cards together. I like to keep them around, label them with machines and everything, and having the cutout makes an easy uniform object for you to keep, store, and reference all the time. This engraving test can also be considered a pocket cutout test for some materials, such as woods. For example, if you want to find the setting to remove like half the thickness of your material, this test could show you that. So it's another way of, you know, I don't want to engrave it, but hey, that might be cool to take away half the thickness of material, kind of give myself a little impromptu or 3D looking effect. This test could help you out in that way. Down at the bottom, I've also put the default layer settings and in bold all caps, confirm these before you run the test. I try my best to log down all the settings and everything to stay put, but as this file goes from my computer to the internet, to you, to your Xcool Creative Space application, I don't know if it's gonna completely translate. I've had it translate fine for me, but just in case, like I said prior, this is my first line of support for you. If you get in here, you didn't know what the settings were, and if they were wrong, it would just cause frustration. All right, the next thing to cover are the layers. So down here at the bottom left, what is currently highlighted, the pink one, notes from Sam. The next one is the red layer, that are the test squares. The blue one is my final cutout layer, and the black is my text engraving. So looking at text engraving, I'm gonna select it, and over here to the right, I'm gonna confirm our results. It is a vector. I wanna make sure it's set to output, engrave, 50% power, 300 millimeters per second speed, one pass, and 100 lines per centimeter. This engraving setting is just a starting point. You're probably gonna have it either be too light or too dark, or maybe it's just right, I don't know. Could be the Goldilocks effect. But basically, on this file, the first time you run it, Yes, you want your engraving, the black text layer to actually come through and be visible, but the really big goal is to get those squares in the middle, and then you know exactly what setting works best for your machine and that material. So here, 50% power, 300 millimeters a second, is just my best guess. Clicking down to the test squares, on the notes here, it tells me it's set as output, engrave, various settings on power and speed. What you're gonna see here is in gray, it has little asterisks and multiple values. That's what you want to see, that's correct. And then 100 lines per centimeter. On the final cutout, you're gonna see that it is set to ignore it at first. That way, if you don't know your cutout speed, or if you don't want to cut it out, or if you can't, let's say we're engraving slate, it's just set to ignore. If you know your cut speeds, you can enable it, all that kind of stuff, but out of the box default, we're gonna ignore it. It's not gonna process it and engrave it on your piece. Just like with text engraving, this final cutout setting, I don't know what to choose for you because I don't know what material you're using or what machine exactly. So fill those in with your materials cut settings. If you don't know your cut settings, sit tight. There's another test in here that lets you figure that out. All right, to look at the red squares, individual power and speed, if you click on it once, it's just gonna select the whole group. So we'll go up here to the top, we're gonna ungroup this. Now we can click on one square and down here it should be 100% 200 millimeters per second. Look over to the right, 100%, 200 millimeters per second. Looks good. I generally spot check one or two and then leave it. If one or two are right, I assume they all will be. At this point, you are ready to run your tests. Load your material in there. Set your thickness here. So on your machine, you may need to measure it. You may need to drop your laser down. You may not even see this. For the XTOL P2, it has automatic focusing and adjustments. I just enter my thickness here, click, and then as you see there, it blips. It shows me my live preview of my background. That's something specific to the P2. So if you have another model and it doesn't do this, don't freak out. It's just this model doing this. After you've done that, you can then select your actual cutout and move it around, drag it around, move it wherever you want on your file. If this is how you're using it with the P2, if you have one of the D1s or something like that, move your laser where you want to start. It's normal. Everything you do to start your job, you do the same with this. Once you have your location set, you're ready to go ahead and click process down here at the bottom right. So I click process. 
it brings up the preview file and at this part this screen right here if it does not look exactly like you think it should go back and fix your settings see in this example here I don't have the outline the final cutout that's because we have it disabled or set to ignore that's fine unless we want it then we would go back click the layer output and go back here as long as things look fine here you can go ahead and click process at the top right one thing to note since these squares are vectors you're not going to see grayscale shading with the power and speed settings they're all going to be black on here that's fine that's normal when it gets in the machine that's when you'll see the variations with something like a grayscale test it's actually an image you're engraving you do see the grayscale so here don't freak out grayscale you want to see it all right i'm not going to run this job just yet so i'm going to go back i want to show you the other files here on our tabs or canvases down below so we just looked at the 20 to 200 millimeters per second engraving test next one up is a 175 to 400 millimeters per second engraving test this is the exact same thing as the other engraving test just at faster speeds i use this one for materials such as wood or even slate depending upon your wattage again this is a machine i use is a 55 watt co2 so it's hotter i tend to go faster and lower powers but if you have one of the diode machines either one of these files will probably be okay just go there see how you get if you need to go faster or slower pick a different file i'm not going to spend too much more time on this because i covered a lot in the other engraving test so let's skip on to our cutting test first up is the three to seven millimeter per second cut test and we'll scroll in here so we can see it a little bit better and again first thing to do read the notes from sam um, i tell you this is a slow cutting file this particular one three millimeters per second very slow and you're going to run it as hot as 90 percent power do not ever leave your material and laser unattended note number two is to adjust the layer for text engraving to whatever you found from your engraving test or that you already know is best for your machine to engrave on the material you're using simple as that the final cut layer is also set to ignore with this file just like the others this one is set to ignore because the whole purpose of this test is to find out the optimal cutting settings so how would you know what to punch in your final cutout until you've run the actual job that's my thinking at least sure you could run the final cutout three millimeters per second 90 percent power that would probably work assuming anything on this would work but to err on the side of safety i've set it to ignore it and had you do the extra step of run your test then run your cutout and then down at the bottom we can see our default layer settings you know, our text engraving line engraving the test cutouts and the final cutout just like with the engraving test on this cutting test i've got you everything for you to click on each layer look confirm and make sure the settings are right down here at the bottom you're going to see our next cutting test just steps up to the next little bracket from 8 to 12 millimeters per second otherwise it is completely identical and the same thing with the third cutting test 13 to 17 millimeters per second same format same layout same notes pretty much just a different speeds depending upon your machine's wattage or power or your materials thickness they're all the same last but certainly not least in this one file to rule them all test file is the grayscale test in this example what you have here is a grayscale color wheel it is an image so what your laser is going to do is try its best to engrave the image based upon the grayscale bitmap image engraving settings the power and speed settings that you're going to choose for the image engraving layer is kind of subjective you could choose to use what is your most optimal settings from your material test your engraving test or you can choose to use something hotter or lighter if you want darker or lighter shades of the grayscale test i don't really know what to tell you on this one other than to start right in the middle and then go from there maybe you need to go a little bit hotter for this test maybe a little bit lighter don't know but that's the note point here is to say to use your engraving test settings from your other machine tests on this one as a starting point i figure at this point you're this far along on the file you kind of know my methodology all the tests are have the same shell just different middle parts and you probably are getting the hang of it at this point so there you go guys there are these six tests all within this one file so let's take the time and actually run this
All right, guys, this is the 20 millimeter second, 200 millimeter second engraving test. I did it on slate because I knew if I did wood, it would set it on fire. And it actually has melted the slate at the top. So I've got a plastic bristle brush here. I like to use this to kind of get the flakes dust off a little bit. All right, for my three to seven millimeter test, I'm gonna lay in some nine millimeter thick Baltic birch plywood. This is true Baltic birch. Nine millimeters in thickness. I think that is three eighths of an inch equivalent. Let's put this in here. Let's see if this machine will cut through this stuff. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, but let's try it here on camera. Must have hit an anomaly inside the wood. Oh, yeah, we didn't get all the way cut through on this part. That's what you run into a lot with wood.
I'm at my last test, which is the grayscale engraving test. So I'm looking at my engraving test results on the wood that I did earlier. And this is where it's kind of a little bit difficult to figure out what setting I want to start off with. So looking at the text here, the default settings look pretty good on this piece of wood. But as I go through my grid, I don't know if I cook this a little too much. So what I'm going to do is use the default text settings from the engraving grid test. Just copy it into the grayscale and use that as my starting point. This is kind of an example of one of those tests where I don't really know where to go. So I'm going to start here and I can go up or down from there. And with that, the final test, the grayscale test is done. We're done running through all of the tests in this file. I've got to be honest, I don't know when you would use this. And this turned out a little bit weird. Here at the top, the 5%, 10%, it's not solid all the way through and how it processed grayscale. And then down here at the bottom between 70 and 40%, it's like it lost all definition. Now this could totally be some anomalies in the wood. You know, we're dealing with organic material here, so it could be the wood fighting it or causing that outcome, or it could just be that my settings were off with grayscale. I don't know. To be honest, I've never run a grayscale test before. This is the first time I've ever run one. I see it a lot in other people's tests. They post online or say, hey, I did a test, such and such. I see it, so I've always thought maybe it's worthwhile, but I've never really used it. Either way, it's in the file. If you want to use it, it's there for you. There we have it. The Xtool Creative Space all in one, one file to rule them all. I don't know what to call this other than the biggest laser test file and probably the only one you might need. At least the only one that I've needed in my experience with my workshop and my small business. There you go. So for Sam, yeah, it's the only file he needs, I think. Now that I have all of my tests done, at least for the first part, I can use the little hole that I put in all of these cutouts slide them on this snap ring and have an easy way to store them organize them and keep them together what i also like to do that i haven't shown on video is usually on the back of the material okay not so much with acrylic but definitely the wood i put the machine i put the engraving settings and things that i used i use the back of these cards as my notes section Again, I will have this file for sale on my website and my Etsy store. I will also have a light burn version of these files put together as a package. As of the making of this video, I haven't yet seen light burn incorporate the tabs or the canvases style feature like Xtool Creative Space does, but they'll at least be together one big package. And as of now, 2023, middle of the year, this is my go-to one file or package to do everything with laser engraving and cutting. If you guys got any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.